Hello friends, welcome to Rajas Data Engineering. In this video, I am going to talk about how to trigger Databricks Notebook through Azure Data Factory. This is one of the common requirement in Azure Data Engineering. Before getting into this requirement, let us understand what is Azure Data Factory. ADF is one of the orchestration framework given by Azure. It's one of the separate service, same like Azure Databricks. Using Azure Data Factory, we can create ETL pipelines. But uh, uh, Databricks, it's a coding tool. But Data Factory, it's a code-free visual tool. And ADF, it's used not only for uh, building ETL pipelines and also it is act as a scheduler. So in the market, you know, there are uh, popular scheduling tools like Airflow. Similar to that, ADF can also be used scheduling purpose. Even uh, Databricks uh, notebook can be scheduled using Databricks workflow or Airflow or Azure Data Factory. So in this uh, requirement, we are going to see how to schedule Databricks Notebook using Azure Data Factory. As I told earlier, when we have Databricks workflow already in place, why do we need Azure Data Factory for triggering Databricks Notebook? Because you know, there are several reasons. One is when we have to mix certain um, uh, activities from Azure Data Factory and some notebook from Databricks in order to achieve some ETL uh, solution, then we can go with that. It's me, it means mix of Azure services to achieve some target solution. That is one requirement. Apart from that, even though Databricks is having a workflow in place, it's not suitable for uh, some scenarios. One scenario could be like event-based loading, which means when a data file is arrived as soon as the notebook should be triggered. So there are some limitations within Databricks. But uh, ADF can do this uh, solution because ADF, there are uh, three different types of triggers. One is event based trigger, which means once the file arrives, immediately it will start triggering the activity. So that can be leveraged for this requirement. In Databricks also, there are some solutions you know, which can detect the file as soon as uh, uh, it arrives and it can process. One is auto loader, but auto loader is more kind of a streaming solution that is not suitable for patch processing. So that is the reason. Uh, in case you know, we have to load the data as soon as it arrives using Databricks notebook, then we can go with EADF integration. These are a couple of reasons. You now there are various other scenarios as well, but uh, you know these are a couple of scenarios where we can go with EADF scheduling. In this particular requirement, which means in order to schedule Azure Databricks notebook using Azure Data Factory, what are the components involved? First one is we should have Azure Databricks Notebook, which is performing the core ETL, uh, ETL job. And in order to connect that Azure uh, Databricks um, from Azure Data Factory, we have to create something called linked service. Once we have created linked service, uh, for this scheduling, we should also choose the cluster selection. In Azure Databricks, there are two different types of cluster. One is job cluster, another one is all-purpose cluster. I have already posted one video about these two different types of clusters. In case you haven't watched, I would highly recommend to watch that video to get better understanding. Once uh, we have created these components, then uh, in Azure Data Factory, while calling the Azure Databricks Notebook, we have to uh, set up the input and output parameters if any. In case we are using input and output parameters in our notebook, then we have to set up these parameters as well. These are uh, optional. In case we don't have any parameters, then we don't need these components. Right. I hope you understood uh, the basic concept of this requirement. Let's get started with the demo. I have logged into my Databricks environment and my cluster is up and running. So I'm going to walk through one simple uh, use case, which I have already explained in one of my previous video, where I uh, talked about Azure Key Vault integration with Databricks. It's the same requirement. The requirement is we have to pull some data from Azure SQL database and we have to write the output into Azure Data Lake Storage. For that, I'm defining the JDBC connection in the first step using Azure Key Vault uh, integration. Then the second step, I'm going to read uh, the data from a SQL table that is uh, dbo.emp. So this is my Azure SQL database. In this database, I'm having one table called uh, employee EMP. And within that, I have two columns, name and salary. And it is containing only one record just for this demo. It's Raja 1000. This is very simple data set, but we can scale, uh, you know, this uh, solution across, uh, you know, very huge uh, tables, right? 
So I am creating a data frame by reading that uh, table. Once that is done, now we have to write the output into Azure Data Lake Storage. For that, we have to create a mount point. But I have already created mount point. That's the reason I have commented out uh, this part. But in case you uh, want to uh, create a mount point, you can use the same code. Uh, if you don't understand what is mount point, I have already explained that in one of the previous video where uh, how to integrate uh, ADLS uh, with uh, Databricks. So in case you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend to watch that video as well. Once integration point is done, then Databricks will be able to talk to Azure Data Lake Storage. So in the next step, I am writing the output into Azure Data Lake Storage container uh, based on the mount point and also I am creating one folder. I am defining the um, uh, folder name employee output underscore then uh, I am appending the timestamp. Based on this location, it will be written to Azure Data Lake Storage. It's very simple architecture, very simple solution for this demo. But the core uh, concept in this uh, video is how to trigger this particular pipeline from ADF. Right. Now uh, we understood the solution. Let me get back to my uh, data factory environment. This is my Azure Data Factory environment. In order to trigger the uh, notebook, we have to use uh, Databricks Activity Notebook that is available under Databricks. So we have to use this uh, notebook activity. We can uh, drag and um, drop it here. So I have already created that one. So I'm not going to do that. So this is my notebook. So I'm giving a name in the general section ADB trigger. And the next step is we have to go with Azure Databricks setup. In this place, we have to create a linked service. Linked service is nothing but you know it's a connection to uh, Databricks, which means this Azure Data Factory should be able to connect successfully with Azure Databricks. For that, we have to create some uh, some uh, something called linked service. So I have already created one linked service using that. You know, it is it, it will be able to talk to Azure Databricks environment. Let me test. The connection is successful, but I would like to show you how to create that. In order to create a linked service, we have to click on this new. Then we have to give some meaningful name. Let me give uh, ls adb demo. Then we have to tell from which subscription you now we we have that uh, Azure Databricks environment. In this example, I have created Databricks environment also within same subscription. Then I am going with that option. Then I am choosing a subscription. Then I am choosing my Databricks workspace name. This is my workspace name. Then the important thing is it will ask access token. The access token should be taken from Azure Databricks. So let me get into my Databricks environment there. In order to get access token, we have to click on this place, then click on user settings. And it will open this form here. We can generate access token for that. We have to click on generate new token. Then we have to give some meaningful name. Maybe here I'm giving ADF uh, integration. Then we can uh, set the time you not know, till uh, when it can be valid. Then we have to click on generate. And it will generate the token and also it will give warning message saying that it should be copied somewhere because once we are clicking on this done, then it cannot be retrieved anyway. Uh, again, let me click on OK because anyway, it's not needed for me. I have already integrated. So we need to put that uh, access token here. Once that is done, we can uh, test the connection, then we can create. But anyway, I have already created. That's the reason I am uh, just canceling. Now my connection is successful. Third step, I have to choose my notebook, which notebook I have to execute. So based on the link service, uh, link service we have created uh, in the previous step, this uh, Azure Data Factory activity will be able to log in into Azure Data uh, Data Bricks and it will list down all the uh, notebooks. For example, in this case, you know it is uh, going to users. Then you know I have uh, uh, many users within many uh, you know within each user I have many notebooks. For example, here I want to select ADF trigger. Once I have uh, selected my uh, trigger, uh, I have selected my notebook. Then uh, uh, we are good to we are good. To proceed with. In case we are having any input parameter for our notebook, then we can set up those input parameters here in the base parameter. We have to click on new, but I don't have any. That's the reason I'm not going with base parameter. I have forgotten to tell one thing uh, while uh, creating uh, the link service. Uh, that is a place where we have to mention our job cluster also. Either we want to go with our uh, job cluster or we will go with uh, existing cluster, which we have already created in our environment. 
So in my uh, case, I went with existing interactive cluster for this demo. But in most of the real time scenarios, we used to go with job cluster also. Okay, we have set up everything. We have uh, created um, activity within that we have created link services. We have uh, chosen our notebook and if any parameters that also we have set up. Now we can execute this pipeline. Now let me get into my uh, data lake storage. This is the data lake storage and I have created one container called the demo within the demo. I don't have any uh, folder uh, with uh, employee output underscore uh, appended by timestamp. We are having only one folder that is employee output. Now when we are going to execute uh, this particular uh, pipeline, it will internally call Azure data bricks and the data bricks will uh, read the data from Azure SQL and it will uh, write the data into Azure data lake storage. So when we complete the execution of this particular pipeline, what happens is data would be pulled from Azure SQL and would be written to Azure data lake storage. Right. Now uh, it's a time to execute. Let me uh, execute this um, pipeline. So in order to execute this pipeline, we can either use debug or uh, we can add a trigger. So debug it is mainly for development environment and uh, once we have completed our development, we can schedule by creating some trigger. So how to create a trigger for that we can uh, uh, click on trigger now it will uh, trigger only once now or we can create some schedule trigger you know recurring uh, schedule. So for that you know we have to uh, choose we have to create a new uh, trigger then it will ask some details you now here in the trigger we have to choose. Now this is a schedule based tumbling window or event based. Then uh, based on that you know we can set up the schedule also you know it should um, schedule for every 15 minutes or every Monday you know we can set up that logic. But anyway in this example I am going to debug which means even through debug this uh, data factory activity will call the data bricks notebook then it will uh, complete the execution. Let me start the execution for that I am going to click on debug. Let me execute. The execution is in progress. We can see here execution is completed now. Now let me go back to my Azure data lake storage and let me refresh. I should be able to see output folder with current timestamp within that you should have created my output file as well. This is how we can integrate Azure data bricks with Azure data factory. So to summarize the steps we have to create notebook activity within that we have to create linked services and in the next step we have to choose uh, the notebook. Then we have to set up uh, input or output parameters. Then finally we can debug uh, in order to run only one time or we can uh, schedule using trigger. I hope you understood the concept how to integrate Azure uh, Data, Databricks notebook with Azure Data Factory. Hope you understood and enjoyed the video. If you like the content of this video, please like and comment in the channel. Also, please subscribe the channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button. Thank you.